Welcome to Tuesday Cafe. I'm Sean Canan, and we are broadcasting live on May 7th from the studios of WMNF in Tampa. And today we're going to talk about student demonstrations that have gripped campuses across the U.S. and even around the world. And that includes right here in Tampa at USF. We just heard a great discussion on Democracy Now! about the professor at Dartmouth who was harmed by police and her reaction to the uh, police responses. We'll talk about all sorts of things about student demonstrations during this hour. Our guests today oppose the Israeli attacks on the Gaza Strip and the financial connections of their university, Saba Indawala and Victoria Hinckley from Tampa Bay Students for a Democratic Society have been de demonstrating at USF. And I want to welcome you both to Tuesday Cafe, Saba and Victoria. Sorry. All right. Hi, I, thanks so much for having me on. Here. I have to turn off my audio, but I will um, get you back on in just a second. All right, let's try that one more time. Welcome, Saba and Victoria. Hi, can you hear me all right? I can. Thanks so much. Sorry, I, I messed up there at the beginning. And Victoria, if you have video, that'd be great for our television audience as well. Yes. So let's begin with you, Victoria. Uh, you were a guest on WMNF's True Talk last week, and we learned that you were a student at USF, but you were suspended just before graduation because of your demonstrations. We'll talk about what happened at those protests later on in the show, but First of all, just let us know, are you still suspended by the university and were you able to graduate? All right, let's start with let's start with you, Saba, then. Saba, uh, what can you tell us about what why you're demonstrating at USF? What is it about uh, the the university and your demonstrations? And if you could unmute yourself, please. Yeah, so um, we, Tampa Bay SES, um, led the encampments at USF, uh, the, com like, the community, in support of us and other student groups in support of us um, to demand for things from the university. Um, and they were to uh, disclose investor information to the student body since, you know, students pay tuition, they should know where their tuition is being, um, like where their tuition is going to. And then also USF divest now or like immediately since um, from my understanding, they have like, uh, like student government has made like resolutions to um divest, but they like the university has never gone through with them. And then the third demand is to release a statement in support of Palestinian and Arab students. Since after October seventh, the university president came out with a statement in support of um Israeli students and um. Like ever since, or like in their whole entire history, they've like constantly never been in like support of Palestinian or Arab students. And then our fourth and last demand is to stop stop attacks on student movements for Palestine. Um, yeah. Thanks, and that's Saba Indawala, who is with at USF. And are you a student? And what what are you? What's your major there? Yeah, so I'm a current sophomore in sociology. And we also have joining us again is Victoria Hinckley from Tampa Bay Students for a Democratic Society. And uh, before we lost you a second ago, I was asking you if you were still suspended and if you are um, if you were able to graduate over the weekend and if you could unmute yourself. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, yeah, so I uh, was a senior at USF and I was suspended on Tuesday um, after, you know, USF used uh, tear gas and rubber bullets and uh, flares against students on campus. And um, they charged me with multiple conduct violations, student code of conduct um, charges, um, and they suspended me in interim suspension, which just means that it could be lifted at any point. But uh, right now it's still in place. Um, and they wouldn't let me walk at my graduation ceremony on um, Sunday, it was scheduled for. So they wouldn't let me graduate. They have my record on hold. They still have me suspended. Um, and I basically have to go through the whole conduct process and through like multiple hearings to, um, you know, get the suspension lifted and see if they will uh, give me my diploma. 
We'll try to keep posted with that as we go, uh, as you go throughout that process. So all these demonstrations kind of are based on the Israeli occupation of, of Palestine and also of the attacks that have happened since Hamas's October 7th attacks. And so let me read the latest, at least this is the latest as of the last time I looked, things could have changed quickly, but via AP, an Israeli tank brigade has invaded the Gaza Strip and seized control of the Gaza side of the Rafah border crossing with Egypt. With Egypt, authorities say Israel is moving forward with an offensive, even while ceasefire negotiations with Hamas remain on knife's edge. Today's ground invasion came after hours of whiplash in negotiations. Hamas said yesterday that it had accepted an Egyptian Qatari mediated ceasefire and hostage release proposal, but then Israel insisted the deal did not meet its core demands. So let's back things up to before we we had these major protests and arrests last week on USF campus. Um, so maybe, uh, v Victoria, can you talk a little bit more about what Saba mentioned earlier about your demands that USF divest from Israeli military? Yeah, definitely. So um, actually, I think it was back in 2021 or 2022, Tampa Bay SDS actually had a campaign um, it was our central campaign at the time to get USF to divest from Israel because uh, they have multiple um, investment portfolios that show that they invest in companies like Boeing and company or not. No, I don't think they invest in Boeing, but they do invest in uh, companies like Caterpillar and HP. Um, and those are two companies that have very heavy uh, ties to, to Israel. And we see, you know, um, the machinery from Caterpillar being used to tear down, um, you know, Palestinian homes that have been there for centuries. Um, and we see, you know, Hewlett Packard HP being used at border checkpoints to, uh, you know, imprison uh, Palestinians uh, for trying to travel in their own uh, homeland. Uh, so, you know, we know that USF does invest in these companies. Um, they're trying to keep things you know, secret from students, they don't want us to see what companies they're investing in because they don't want us to know, you know, what other things that they're investing in that do have more connections to um, to Israel right now. Um, and that kind of is where the, the disclosure demand comes in is that we want disclosure from USF, disclosure of their investment portfolios to, uh, you know, show students where our tuition money is going because, you know, that's our tuition money. We believe that we um, should have a say in where that money goes and where it's invested in. Um, and yeah, the div divestment demand just means that we, you know, don't want any ties from USF to Israel and we don't want any, um, investment from our tuition money into companies that are supporting the genocide of Palestinians right now. That's the voice of Victoria Hinckley and our other guest is Saba Indawala. They're from students, Tampa Bay Students for a Democratic Society. And we're talking about their campus demonstrations and also the response by USF. If you're listening live here on May 7th and you like to join the conversation, you can give us a call at 813-239-9663. You can also email dj at wmnf.org, or you can send a text to 813-433-0885. I'm Sean Canan. This is Tuesday Cafe coming to you from WMNF Tampa. So in response to your calls for divestment, USF put out a statement last year on their, on, sorry, last month, April of 2024, on their investment policy. It said, for more than a decade, some individuals have campaigned for USF to divest funds from companies with ties to Israel. USF's consistent position has, and this has been and continues to be, that the university will not divest. USF's investment are guide, investments are guided by the, its mission, fiduciary responsibilities, and state and federal laws. USF does not select individual stocks or companies for investment. USF will continue to make summary information about investments public consistent with the university's investment policy and legal requirements. So that's the, the statement that USF put out kind of at the beginning of these protests. Uh, Saba, maybe you could tell us uh, how you feel about that statement, about whether that meets your demands. If you could unmute, please. Yeah, I, I think, you know, the school should be divesting in companies that um, the student body wants them to divest in. And I mean, like we've seen countless protests on campus. Um, we've seen many 
people in support of the movement, of the student movement for these universities to divest from companies that are, you know, funding the genocide in Israel. And And in, would you like to add anything, Victoria? Yeah, I could uh, add a little bit. Um, you know, I think that statement definitely doesn't meet our demands. You know, they're kind of taking a neutral stance, if any, um, when we know that, you know, they're fully supporting Israel. They put out a statement um, after October 7th saying that they support Israel. Um, but yeah, USF basically tries to claim that they're neutral and their investments, um, you know, aren't based on any political stance, while at the same time, uh, maintaining this kind of rhetoric that, um, you know, Israel, like, has the right to defend itself. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's hard, you know, it's very contradictory for them to say that they're neutral in this, and then for them to also say that they support Israel, you know, so they're kind of trying to play both sides. But, you know, obviously, you know, Asaba said, you know, students are seeing right through that students aren't, um, you know, we're not going to allow this to continue any further. We're not going to allow our tuition money to go uh, towards a genocide anymore. And some students at USF were so um, insistent upon this that they took it upon themselves to have a hunger strike on campus. Were either of you involved or what can you tell us about uh, what that hunger strike was and how it ended up? Yeah, I can um, answer this a little bit. So uh, I wasn't involved and I don't believe Saba was involved either in the hunger strike. Um, but yeah, it just goes to show like how popular these demands are among students at USF. And they have been for years, you know, as um, Saba mentioned earlier, I believe in 2014, there was a, a really widespread petition uh, that got like over 10,000 signatures from students at USF to get USF to divest um, from companies that um, support Israel. Um, so yeah, it's obviously a very widely supported um, demand at USF among students. It's been go it's been popular for um, you know over a decade at this point. So yeah, and the and the resolution that kind of came out of that, you know, even though it's unfortunately not, you know, something that can bind USF administration to listen to the demands of students, you know, it's very symbolic that um, shows you know what the students want and like how they want it to be done how like the changes that they want to see of their university so that resolution did it get taken to the student government and what how did it what was the outcome there yeah so i believe it went to um to a vote at the student government um and it it passed very narrowly because there was there was actually a lot of uh kind of discourse among student government there were um you know, people on kind of either side, I guess, as you would say it. Um, so there was uh, some disagreement within student government there, but it did pass. So it's a very positive thing regardless. But I think you had pointed out that it's it's mostly just to kind of get the feeling of how where the students lie and there's no uh, requirement that the administration has to follow through. Correct. Yeah, because even um, back in 2014, I keep bringing up the petition that got um, you know, thousands and thousands of signatures from students, um, you know, it was kind of just like vetoed by um, the president and by administration because it's not, you know, binding. It doesn't uh, demand anything, you know, it demands things, but it doesn't, um, you know, create this kind of, um, you know, requirement of divestment. It just kind of shows, look, this is what students want. And, you um, you know, it's kind of up to admin at that point if they want to listen to the demands of students. And obviously, as we've seen, you know, they're not listening to the demands of students. Our guests are USF protesters, Victoria Hinckley, who we're just hearing from, and also Saba and Dawala. They're from Tampa Bay Students for a Democratic Society. And we're talking about the campus demonstrations and also we'll be talking later about the response from USF. If you're listening live on May 7th, you can join this conversation. You can call 813-239-9663. You can email dj at wmnf.org, or you can text 813-433-0885. I'm Sean Canan, and this is Tuesday Cafe. We're coming to you live from WMNF in Tampa. 
So your group is Students for Democratic Society, Tampa Bay, SDS. Tell us about that group. What is, how, you know, what are the origins of that group and what are your goals and mission and uh, how many people are in it and so on? Saba, can you take that one? Yeah. Are you, sorry, were you asking like, what are we? What, what are is current? SDS? Oh, so SDS, <laughs> well, SDS is, Tampa SDS is a, like a, a chapter of a national students for democratic society which is a like i said national um action oriented activist organization we um we're focused on multiple issues and we're um like student and youth led and we have chapters all over the the country um and at tampa cs like currently we have a campaign against desantis's hb 999 which um or House Bill 999, which um, um, cuts like funding to diversity, equity, and inclusion um, on campuses. So our current de demands are to expand Africana studies, fund multicultural orgs, and um, defend women and gender studies. And uh, so, uh your group, I think, is one of the groups that's participating in these protests, but there are also groups, the other groups there as well. And so I'm going to name off some groups and let me know, tell me whether um, what I'm reading in the newspaper or wherever is is right. And this is there are also parts of your protests there. Um, the Tampa Alliance Against Racist and Political Repression. Is that a group that you're familiar with? And what can you tell us about that? Yeah, definitely. I could chime in on this one. Um, so the Tampa Alliance Against Racist and Political Oppression, yeah, they've helped out a lot with um, the encampments. Uh, we have a lot of uh, friends in that organization. Um, and so with TARPER, they're actually a also part of a national um, organization called the National Alliance Against Racist and Political Repression, uh, which SDS is also an affiliate of. So, you know, we work very closely. You know, we agree on a lot of uh, the same issues. So we're able to work you know, organizationally um, together, and that helps a lot. Um, but yeah, uh, what uh, TARPER does is they're really focused on um, police crimes work right now. Uh, they're um, defending a man named Antoine Glover against, um, you know, he faced a lot of police brutality and um, he has, uh, uh, you know, false charges against him. So they're focused on getting those drops. Um, and along with police crimes work, they're also uh, really focused on Palestine work in Tampa right now as well. And then the group uh, PSL, P Party for Socialism and Liberation, we're going to hear from one of their members in a few minutes because um, th th I encountered that group as one of the leaders at the demonstration when Joe Biden was in town. So uh, are th have they been involved on the campus at all? Yeah, they were. Um, I think a few of their members were there on campus as well. Yeah. And then CARE, the Council on, um, Arab, on is it Arab American Relation? Oh, sorry, Arab Council on American Islamic Relations. I, I apologize for getting that name wrong at first, but uh, they were also at the Joe Biden protest, and and they I think they've helped out on your the legal side of things for some of the demonstrators. So are they involved at the, at the USF uh, protest as well? Yeah. yeah. Sorry, you can go. You can go. Go ahead, Saba. <laughs> yeah, they they have also been helping out on campus as well. So let me, since I mentioned Joe Biden's uh, um, appearance here in Tampa a few weeks ago, more than 100 anti-war demonstrations demonstrators protested on the edge of the Hillsborough Community College campus in April before Biden arrived there. And uh, they what they were saying is that they took issue with the Biden administration's support of Israel's attacks on Gaza. They chanted things like ceasefire now. And I'm going to play this short clip of Ali Abel. Abdel Qadr, he's an organizer with the Party for Socialism and Liberation. Uh, their presidential candidate that he mentioned to me in that interview is, um, oh, I'll, I'll find that and mention it afterwards. Um, oh, it's Claudia de la Cruz. And uh, so he was protesting the Democrats' presidential nominee, President Biden. But here is Ali Abdel Qadr from PSL. We are here because Joe Biden is coming to Tampa. 
Joe Biden, who has been funding the genocide in Gaza, who has been arming the Israelis, who has supported them all the way through this process. Joe Biden, who, if he wanted to, could, with a stroke of his pen, stop sending weapons to Israel, force Israel to do an immediate and permanent ceasefire. He is complicit in this. He is complicit in war crimes in the Gaza Strip. All of the tens of thousands of people who have died, the millions who are currently starving in the Gaza Strip, he is complicit in that. And now he is coming to Tampa to talk about how he cares about women, to talk about how he cares about women. Give me a break. He does not care about the women in Gaza. He, if he thinks that he's going to win Florida while he's supporting a genocide, he has another thing coming. We are here to say, no, genocide, Joe. You are not welcome here in Tampa. And we're going to remind you of that fact. We're not going to let you forget it. Okay, that's Ali Abdel Qadr speaking a couple of weeks ago. He's an organizer with the Party for Socialism and Liberation. He spoke in April at a pro-Palestine demonstration in Tampa. More than 100 people were protesting before President Biden's speech on the HCC Dale Mabry campus. And so, Victoria, would you like to respond to what Ali is saying there? Yeah, definitely. I think um, that clip kind of really showcases like the messaging of the protest um, and why we were there. Because, you know, um, you know, Ali was exactly right. You know, Biden came um, to Tampa, uh, came to Florida specifically, where, you know, we're facing a six week abortion ban now. Um, and he's trying to kind of make amends with his voters. He's trying to kind of, you know, show face and try to, you know, lie and say that he does care about these issues when, you know, when he was president, he did nothing to protect abortion rights. He did nothing to uh, codify Roe v. Wade into law. And then Roe v. Wade was overturned, you know? So that was a, you know, a big promise that, you know, he let us let people down on because, you know, lots of people voted for him under the guise of, you know, him protecting women's rights, him protecting uh, reproductive rights, which he did not do. Um, and now that, you know, Florida has passed a six week abortion ban, he wants to come back and uh, try to say that he does care about women when, you know, his actions don't show that. And uh, especially his actions of, uh, you know, sending weapons and bombs to um, the IOF, you know, bombing women and killing women and children, you know, it's very clear that he doesn't care about women. Um, and yeah, what Ali said was like, definitely right. Uh, Cause you know, if Joe Biden wanted to, he could stop sending weapons to Israel. He could, uh, you know, end this genocide. Cause you know, there's no um, Israel without the U.S.'s support. I think it was, uh, uh, last time I checked, it was like you, the U.S. Um, provides like 69% of Israel's uh, weapon manufacturing. So, you know, uh, you know, it's our responsibility as people in the U.S. Uh, to demand these things of, uh, you know, our our um, administration, our uh, presidential administration, and demand things of, you know, the institutions that we're a part of, like what we're doing at USF. Our guests are Victoria Hinckley and Saba Indawala from Tampa Bay Students for a Democratic Society. They are USF protesters, and we're talking about their demonstrations at campus and the response by USF. And we're going to go to the phones in just a second to take a phone call from St. Petersburg. And if you're listening live on May 7th, you can also join this conversation. You can call 813-239-9663. You can email dj at wmnf.org, or you can text 813-433-0885. If you're like uh, area code 970 out there and you want to insult people, I'm not going to read your comment. You can be sure about that. But if you have a, a serious question or comment to make, you can sign your name to your text and uh, we'll put you on the air. I'm Sean Canan. This is Tuesday Cafe coming to you from WMNF in Tampa. So we're going to go to the phones now because Mariana in St. Pete wants to ask you uh, some questions here. Hi, Mariana. Welcome to WMNF's Tuesday Cafe. Hi, good morning. Um, I I'll try to make it brief, but I'm I would like for the young women to help me understand actually a couple things because it doesn't make sense to me. And, and the first is the requirement that USF divulge where their investments go. Let's just say for discussion purposes, that's not going to happen. Why don't they just take their tuition dollars elsewhere to a, a university that will be better aligned with what they believe in and that, that might divulge that information. And, and it's a simple analogy, but if I go to a restaurant and I receive yucky food or lousy service, I just don't give them my money anymore. So that doesn't make sense to me. And then the second, they were talking about 
uh, the new bill that DeSantis is bringing down and women's rights. And there's such a disconnect for me to support what I believe is Hamas and a very stringent, um, you know, it, it, they were using abortion for discussion purposes. And if you get pregnant, you get killed with, with, through Hamas. You get stoned to death. You can't vote. All of those things. And yet we're talking about women's rights. I don't understand, and I legitimately would like for them to help me understand that point of view. Okay, Mariana, thanks for the questions. And uh, um, would you like to to take that either of those questions? How about we'll start with Victoria? Yeah, sure. So, um, yeah, for the first question, I think if students were to, you know, leave USF and find a university that you know does align with their beliefs more I think you know that'd be really hard to find because you know a lot of universities in the U.S. do dive do invest in Israel and do support Israel and that's why we're seeing nationwide protests at you know hundreds of colleges and universities you know across the country uh, that are demanding the same thing that we're demanding of USF uh, because you know an overwhelming majority of them do invest in Israel and do um, you know support these Zionist beliefs um, and I think I think um you know, what kind of first came into, into my head was, you know, I've lived in Tampa for over 15 years, you know, this is my home, I, and I've gone to USF for four years, I wouldn't want to just, you know, leave and give up, I want to see it improve, I want to see it change for the better. And that's why I'm fighting this fight for USF to change. I don't want to just, you know, give up and uh, leave people at USF to continue this fight, you know, I want to be part of the fight, I want to be, you know, uh, fighting this uh you know good cause and then for the second question um sorry I'm kind of trying to to dig out the question in there um but yeah I mean I've heard no evidence that you know if you know a Palestinian woman gets pregnant that you know she's killed I don't I don't I haven't heard that I haven't um you know seen any evidence to support that but what I have seen ev evidence to support is you know there's women and children in Gaza right now that are starving. There's, you know, pregnant women in Gaza that are starving um, and, you know, women that are breastfeeding that need to feed their children that are, you know, undergoing famine-like conditions. Um, and I think, you know, the resistance in Palestine is fighting against that. They're fighting against the genocide of, you know, pa Palestinian women. They're fighting against the, um, you know, blockade that Israel has on, you know, what food or resources goes in and out of the Gaza Strip because you know it's you know Israel and the IOF that are making that decision of you know where the food goes where the water goes um in in Gaza and right now they have no access to that because of Israel because of the IOF so the Palestinian resistance is fighting against that and fighting for the liberation of their people thanks for the call Mariana appreciate the questions for you from you thank you so much Bubba writes in he says are the USF students getting support and solidarity from other Tampa Bay colleges like HCC St Leo University or Eckerd College and uh, Bubba concludes his email by saying these students are so impressive and I admire them so, so Saba how are other are other universities uh joining with the USF students not that I'm aware of that, like, we haven't had, like, students come out physically from other universities, um, but we have had support from, like, other organizations and even, like, yeah, from other organizations in the Tampa Bay community, um, and, um, sorry, I'm, like, blanking right now. Yeah, uh, Victoria, do you know of any other universities that have partnered with you guys? Um, and as far as partnered, I'm not sure of, but um, I do know that, you know, people, um, oh, sorry, <laughs> uh, people that, uh, you know, aren't even in the Tampa area will hear, heard about the encampment and came over as fast as they could. You know, I um, encountered people from, you know, as far as UCF and professors from UCF and uh, all across Florida um, that, and like, like uh, USF alumni and people that like didn't have uh you know, a solid connection with USF, they came out to support us and support our demands. So it's clear that like, not only do USF students widely support these demands, um, but, you know, the community of Tampa 
and uh, you know, even Florida, you know, supports us in uh, demanding these things of USF. Our guests are USF protesters Saba Indawala and Victoria Hinckley from Tampa Bay Students for a Democratic Society. And we're talking about their campus demonstrations and the response by USF. And we're going to get to those uh, pretty soon. We haven't talked a lot of in a lot of detail yet about the demonstrations last week. If you're listening live on May 7th, you can join the conversation by calling 813-239-9663. You can also email dj at wmnf.org. Please sign your name. And if you text 813-433-0885, please sign your name as well, and you, you can join this conversation. Uh, so David writes in, he says, thanks for bringing these great guests on your show today. I was surprised to learn recently that the University of Florida has the largest number of Jewish students in the USA. And he says, I think it's close to 10,000 students between undergrad and grad students. And he asks if you know how many Jewish students are at USF. And uh, David concludes his email by saying, I went to New College when it was part of USF back in the 90s. We always had great student activism movement there. I was curious whether your guests are working with any of the legacy students at New College. And he says, unfortunately, the new administration there is meant to remake it into a Hillsdale College of the South. So thanks for those questions, David. Would, would either of you like to take on any parts of uh, David's questions there? Okay, well, we can uh, we can move on from there and we can uh, talk. Oh, Victoria, go ahead. Yeah, I was just giving Saba a chance to uh, speak if you wanted to. But um, yeah, I can't answer them. I don't know the um, number of Jewish students at USF um, off the top of my head. Um, but and then as far as the second question goes, we actually did um, our SES chapter went to New College uh, not too long ago. Uh, they had a panel you know, talking about, you know, what um, kind of happened there and like what happened uh, at the Board of Governors where, um, you know, their college was kind of like re redone, like to fit kind of what DeSantis wanted to, you know, change about their school. Um, so yeah, we do have uh, some good connections um, from students at New College and uh, people that used to go to New College. Um, but as far as, um coming out to the encampment. I'm not sure if we had any new college students there, um, but, you know, I hope uh, they can show out to any future actions that we do have at USF. Let me read another email or two that have come in. Um, Greg writes in and says, anti-Semitism is being weaponized to scapegoat nonviolent student protesters and silence Palestinian voices. We are radicalizing our youth. This response shows nothing but fear and ignorance. That's what Greg says that out there in cyberspace. A similar uh, comment was made by the last guest on Democracy Now! It was a professor Orlick, Annalisa Orlick, who is a Dartmouth professor who was arrested and manhandled by the police. And uh, she said she she said at the end of her interview to stop weaponizing anti-Semitism. She said it's offensive and it's wrong. Um, it was also pointed out that uh, she's, a, I think, a professor of Jewish studies there at Dartmouth and Jewish herself. And uh, so that's she's echoing there what the uh, what uh, Greg's comment, Greg's comments were in that email. Um, so uh, any thoughts about what Greg just said? Uh, Saba, would you like to respond to that? Yeah, I think it's important to uh, note that like anti-Semitism is used as um, it's like always, sometimes it's like it's used by Israel and the IOF to um, support Zionism, but it, there's a clear distinction between the two, and they are not the same at all. Where Zionism is an occupy, like occupy, occupation of Palestine, and that has nothing to do with being anti-Semitic at all. Um, and it's uh, and it's important to note the difference in the two and not um, like relate them at all. And Victoria, um, so I'm going to send this, this next question to you. Um, someone, James says, what about the non-student agitators and the fact that Hamas is the government there and the terrorist group there for your support, Gaza, you support terrorists, is what James is saying out there in uh, cyberspace. Um, any thoughts on that, Victoria? Yeah, uh, so for the first part, uh, for, you know, non-student, I think he's referring to like protests, um, but yeah, we had lots of community support. I wouldn't call it agitating because I think if you even, you know, just look at some of the videos from that day, you can see our protests remaining, uh, you know, quite peaceful, staying very stagnant. 
Um, and when, you know, people like uh, the dean of students, uh, Danielle McDonald, call in riot police um, and have them circle around us, you know, we just, you know, we don't escalate towards them. We stay where we are at our peaceful protests. And then the, you know, they call in the police to move towards us with uh, tear gas and rubber bullets. Um, so, you know, I wouldn't call it agitating, uh, but we do have the community, community support. Um, this The past week at USF has made that clear, if anything, that the community of Tampa is rallying around the students right now and they're supporting our demands uh, for divestment. Um, and yeah, I would say that's a really positive thing, you know, because, uh, you know, USF is is built in a community. Um, so, you know, it's important that we have both of the both of that support. And, you know, Tampa has one of the largest Palestinian communities in the whole country. So it's important that we have the communities uh, backing and the community support right now. Um, and then, so for the second question, I think that, you know, I think people are really quick to label terrorism as anything that they see that's, you know, not really on par with what they believe or what they want to think. But, you know, when you, when you think about it really plainly, you know, what the, the battle that Palestine is fighting right now is for liberation. They're fighting their Zionist oppressors. They're fighting, um, you know, an army that has occupied their land for over 75 years now. Um, and, you know, they have, they have a right to resist. They have a right to rebel. You know, people, they're having their, their ancestral homelands taken over. They're having, they're watching their families, you know, be killed. They, ha they, they have a right to resist against this, uh, you know, violent occupation. Cause you know, if, um, Israel and the IOF is using violence against them, you know, why shouldn't they protect themselves? Why shouldn't they, um, you know, rebel against that? Um, and yeah, I think, you know, you know, there's a lot of people that aren't in the resistance in Gaza right now. Um, and so I think if anything, if people don't support the resistance, you know, they're supporting, uh, you know, the civilians and the people in Gaza that are, you know, starving, the children that are starving, um, and especially Rafa right now, there's, you know, uh, you know, it's densely populated with children. And, you know, if anything, people should be supporting, you know, children not being uh, massacred and genocided. Our guests are Victoria Hinckley and Saba Indawala from Tampa Bay Students for a Democratic Society. They are protesters at USF, and we're talking about their campus demonstrations and the response by USF. And uh, this is Tuesday Cafe coming to you from WMNF in Tampa. I'm Sean Canan. We've gotten a, a little bit further ahead. We haven't quite started talking uh, um, about the demonstrations that happened last week. So let me get to that. If you're on the phone right now, hold on. Um, I know there's a lot of people that want to weigh in here and, and want to say what they have to say, and I'm going to try to get you on later. But I do want to um, move us into what happened last week. So on Monday of last week, activists clashed with police at USF while they set up an encampment near the middle of campus. They're joining college activists nationwide protesting Israel's war on Gaza. Let's listen to about a minute of this report that was filed last Monday when, the, when students started to... Um, set up tents at USF, and we'll come back to our guests in just a second. From the river to the sea, Palestine will, will be free. A group of around 40 activists protested outside of the campus library, then marched to the MLK Plaza near the middle of campus with blankets and tents to set up an encampment. University police, school officials, and a smaller group of pro-Israel activists flanked the demonstration. Police handed out printed guidelines to some protesters. Later, things escalated when demonstrators started to set up tents. This led to a clash with police and some protesters being escorted away by the police. <laughs> Students like Kamiko Solomon acknowledged the risk but continue to demonstrate. Everyone should be scared, but at the same time, it's nothing compared to what the Palestinians are going through at the moment. Protesters are demanding that USF divest from Israel, disclose all investment information, and put out a statement standing in solidarity with Palestinian and Arab students. Ali is a demonstrator who spoke at the rally. Their investment portfolio has remained private since 2013. We as students, alumni, and faculty of a public university to serve to know where USF money goes. In early April, a group of USF activists ended a hunger strike lasting over two weeks. They too demanded the university divest from Israel. For WMNF News, I'm Chris Young in Tampa. Well, that's Chris's description of what happened last Monday at USF, um, and things were moving really quickly last week. We'll get to Tuesday in just a second, but this is the statement that, that USF put out 
on Monday. And honestly, I'm not going to have time to read it all. I, I was hoping that I would, but it's very long. The University of South Florida values the right to free speech and protecting the constitutional right for individuals and groups on campuses to express themselves. This includes peaceful protests and demonstrations that occur regularly on USF's three campuses without incident and are part of the public discourse of a university. However, the expression of free speech must remain peaceful and not violate the law or USF policies. The university has been clear that violence, threats, harassment, and disruptions will not be tolerated. And then uh, it goes through um, about the, the arrests of three people that day on Monday. And um, it might make sense for me just to kind of now move into Tuesday before we go to our guests who are there presumably for both of these demonstrations. Last Tuesday, dozens of heavily armed law enforcement on the Tampa campus of University of South Florida can be seen in videos with shields and helmets as they disperse the peaceful gathering of people who are protesting the U.S. support of Israel's attacks on Gaza. So this was Tuesday afternoon. And I when I, I was I was not there. I was uh, um, not there Tuesday. We had Chris there Monday. But I watched videos that were posted to Instagram. And here is the announcement that the... Um, Police said when they were about to uh, release what they called chemical munitions. So let's listen to that. Do not resist arrest or any other enforcement action which could result in risk of injury which may occur. We will be utilizing chemical munitions. We will be releasing chemical munitions. And uh, you can see the video posted on Instagram by Resistance Tampa Bay. It shows police using gas and a number of protesters sprinting away from that gas. Some of them were crying and holding their heads. 10 students or 10 people were arrested that day. Uh, a former reporter of ours was there on the scene, and she said that uh, even though she was reporting, she was still affected by the gas hours later. Uh, it was burning her her nose and, and face and eyes. Um, so uh, presumably both of you were there. Saba, what can, how would you describe what happened on Tuesday when those police arrested 10 people at USF campus? Yeah. Um... I think it was really brave of people to continue to um, like hold the line and to defend the encampment that we had up. Um, the It was insane that the um, ad administration called in the police and called in, I think, six jurisdictions um, against these peaceful protesters. And then we had, um, and the protesters had like shields and um, helmets and such. Um, to protect themselves from the police because the police came in riot gear and from my understanding I've never seen I've, I've never heard of like USF um, deploying tear gas before on students so this was insane and like never seen before um, were you one of the people that was arrested Saba? no yeah, I interrupted you go ahead <laughs> you're good um, and it's interesting to see how the administration would rather like uh deploy this force and um fear onto students and other activists there rather than just um like meeting the demands of the students so victoria you were there and you were arrested so why don't you describe um what you can add to what our description was earlier and the sounds we heard and what saba has said what else can you tell us about that day yeah so i actually was not arrested i uh okay. wasn't arrested yeah, I wasn't arrested. Um, I was uh, charged with student code of conduct, um, like alleged violations after um, Tuesday, but I was not arrested. I just had those charges uh, placed against me. Um, but yeah, I can go a little bit more into depth. Um, yeah, I mean, we heard the dispersal order. People that were holding the line on the encampment hold, heard the dispersal order. We said, you know, okay, should we disperse? And they said, no, we're going to hold the line. So, you know, they're they're willing to put themselves on the line and, um, you know, take these risks for Palestine. You know, it's, it goes to show like how brave people are being right now, um, the lengths that people are willing to go to um, to support these demands and to get USF to divest. And yeah, Saba said um, in my in my time at USF and as far as I know, USF has never uh, used tear gas against students. They've never used rubber bullets against students. Um, so you know, this was nothing short of historic. You know, this was a, a nationwide a student movement that we were taking part of. And this response from USF, you know, it's similar to, um, you know, what happened at, uh, I believe it was Tulane University. We have an SCS chapter there and they were setting up an encampment. They had a uh, tear gas used against them as well from uh, 
uh, riot cops that were called in by their administration. So, you know, it's a it's a pattern of uh, universities and especially uh, universities, you know, in the South um, that are, you know, suppressing student protesters in this way. Um, and as far as uh, at USF specifically, you know, I've uh, encountered multiple times now the the way that USF administration will call in uh, the police to brutalize student protesters. You know, I experienced that on March 6th um, where, uh, you know, the Tampa Five were charged and arrested. And I, I experienced that the first two days of our encampment at USF, you know, the the, the brutal force that um, the that uh, USF administration is willing to, um, you know, use against uh, protesters and use against uh, students that are demonstrating on campus. And, you know, the they you know, they try to continue this lie that they support the right to free speech and they support, um, you know, students that are protesting. Um, but, you know, how how can how can they continue to say that when, you know, students were tear gassed on their own campus? You know, how how can they say that when people were shot with rubber bullets? It, it's ridiculous for them to continue this lie. You know, they have never, never once in my three years in SDS at USF protesting constantly have I felt supported by the USF administration. And, or have I felt that uh, my my rights were being protected by the USF administration? So, you know, they're trying to lie. They're trying to paint students. Um, they're trying to paint our uh, student protests as being violent and being escalatory towards the police when that's not what happened. And they're trying to say, they're trying to double back and cover their ground and trying to say that they, they support the right to free speech when we all know that that's not what happened on Tuesday. Our guests are Victoria Hinckley and Saba Indawala with Tampa Bay Students for a Democratic Society. They're protesters at USF, and we're talking about the campus, campus demonstrations that last week and the response by USF and by off-campus police. And uh, if you're listening live on May 7th, you can join this conversation. I'll tell you how in just a second. I'm Sean Canan. This is Tuesday Cafe. We're coming to you live from WMNF in Tampa on May 7th. And uh, we have some people on the line. So I do want to get to these phone calls, some of these before the end of the show, if we can get to some. But I also want to hear from you. So you can drop us a line at 813-433-0885 is the text number. You can call 813-239-9663, or you can email dj at wmnf.org. Please sign your name. So uh, let's go now to Art in Largo. What would you like to say, Art? Yes, very, very good uh, topic today. Thank you. I would like to respond to Mariana's two questions very briefly. Number one, Divesting is a moral, nonviolent movement. It is not a political movement. Because it involves Palestinians does not make it a political movement. And number two, Mariana's opinion of Hamas as a terrorist group lacks context. Namely, Hamas was created as a response to the ethnic cleansing and occupation. It was created in 1982 some 15 years after the occupation of 1967. Thank you, Sean. All right. Thank you, Art. Thanks for calling in and uh, adding that those thoughts. So appreciate everybody who's called in. Uh, since we're on the line, let's go to Gia in Tampa. Hi, Gia. What would you like to say? Hi. First, I want to say that I'm so proud of all the student protesters nationally that have been protesting. I'm so proud. You know, I call Tampa my home. I'm so proud to see so many brave students at USF standing up for what's right. I feel like right now is a really historic time, especially with the elections coming up and so much movement around uh, fighting for the freedom of Palestinians and Palestine. Uh, I just wanted to ask uh, if Saba or Victoria know of anything happening, I mean, locally, but also nationally, uh, movements around big marches or anything around Palestine that people can go out to. All right. Thanks, Gia. We will put that to our guests. So Saba or or Victoria, do you know of anything? How can you respond to Gia? Yeah. So um, this upcoming Saturday in Orlando, there's a um, protest to remember the Nakba, I believe. And yeah. So Saturday in Orlando, there's a demonstration, a, a statewide gathering, I presume? Yes, I think at Lake Eola. Like. Yeah, okay. At Lake, at Lake Eola, we'll look into that and see what we can find out about that, unless you know more about that, Victoria? 
Um, I don't have any details to add on that event, um, but I do know that uh, we're going to be planning um, a protest here in Tampa um, on Nakba Day for the Nakba on uh, the 15th of this month. Um, it'll probably be in downtown Tampa, but uh, people should be on the lookout for that flyer on our socials. So possibly something coming up this Saturday in Orlando and on the 15th in downtown Tampa or wherever it gets scheduled. So thanks for that. I hope that helps, Gia. Thanks so much for calling in. Thanks, Gia. And um, let's see if we can uh, squeeze in a, one or two more. Let's see. Robert in Sarasota, what would you like to say? Yeah, thanks for taking my call. I was actually walking in the door from work uh, at 5 o'clock when I saw it being advertised on the, I think it was Channel 8 was broadcasting it live. And, and everything I saw was procedurally correct. It was very satisfying to see law and order restored against uh, just a few people who um, – I don't even think they, they understand what they're protesting, because if they did, the narrative would be protesting to remove Hamas from Palestine, not from uh, removing Israel from Palestine. So um, I think the American people are smart enough to see through the childish, ridiculous behavior of these freshmen, sophomores, and the, and the, uh, the, the people that are inciting that and, and allowing them to have a voice. But they can grab their signs and chant justice for Lindsay out on the sidewalk. We don't want them in our public institutions and in our schools. And, and I think uh, your topic today is, is, is genuine, and I get it, but uh, most of your callers are oblivious to the, the reality of what's going on in the Middle East. Thanks for taking my call. All right. Thanks, Robert. Um, all right. So, uh, Victoria or Saba, would you like to respond to any of those phone calls? Yeah, I can respond to that. Uh... Uh, Robert's call there. So, um, yeah, I think, you know, it's actually the opposite. I think a lot of people and especially students are, you know, really highly educated on this issue. I think they're, you know, finally waking up to, uh, you know, the reality that Palestinians are facing right now um, in Palestine and in occupied Palestine. Um, and I think, you know, the nation nationwide student movement that we're seeing of encampments right now is, uh, you know, an expression of, you know, their education on this. Um, because, you know, I didn't, know you know much about palestine and much about palestinian liberation until i joined scs because we're such an outspoken group about palestinian liberation um so you know it was through that that i was able to you know gain this insight and gain this knowledge and you know speak with palestinians like in the community and you know see their insight on it as well um and yeah i think that you know kind of to his second point you know schools don't run if students aren't there you know, there's no university if there's no students and there's no students paying tuition. So, you know, I think that we have every right to be doing what we're doing. I think we have every right to demand these things of our university because, you know, it's our school. Uh, we make it what it is and we want to see these things of our universities. Before I go get too much ahead of the game, since we have been talking about the protests that happened on on uh, Tuesday and we are getting the response of the students who were there, I also want to sit, talk about what the university responded. I can't read their whole statement. We don't have time, but I'll say they said, as the day progressed, police observed participants in person and through social media expressing their intent to use some of the items they brought on campus as weapons and to resist university staff members and law enforcement officers. As a result, USF police determined that the protest was no longer peaceful and participants must leave the area. There's things before that and after that, of course, but um, that's kind of USF's uh, decision about why they uh, used the police to break up the, the protest that they said uh, they, they expected to be violent. On that note, unfortunately, we have just a few seconds left. So I just want to thank my guests for coming on Tuesday Cafe today, Saba and Victoria. Thank you so much. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Thanks to both of you. Saba and Dawala and Victoria Hinckley are with Tampa Bay Students for a Democratic Society, and we've been speaking about their anti-war demonstrations at USF. You've been listening to Tuesday Cafe. I'm Sean Canaan, News and Public Affairs Director at WMNF Tampa. During this time slot tomorrow, Shelley will host Midpoint. Coming up next is Wavemakers with Janet and Tom Sherberger. Their Wavemaker today is the iconic Tampa personality Joe Redner, who has spent decades fighting against government intrusion into our personal lives. Hope you stay tuned and listen to that. Then coming up at noon is Wide Awake America with Nadine Smith. Her guest will be historian Danea Wright, who will unpack Florida's assault on academic freedom. This has been Tuesday Cafe coming to you live on May 7th, 2024 from the studios of WMNF Tampa. 
St. Petersburg, Sarasota, and Lakeland. Thanks so much for listening. And thanks to my guests, Saba and Victoria.